everyone, this is C from simplygfx.org and today I'm going to be doing a retouch tutorial on Photoshop CS6 where I teach you how to look absolutely stunning in Photoshop and we start off with something um, like this and end up with uh, something that looks like this. So you can see it looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. We're going to be doing a horror film kind of zombie inspired look. So um, you can see it's a very easy uh, tutorial, just a few layers. Um, so let's start off by going into layer and grabbing a new adjustment layer. I'm going to take a black and white filter and my reds going to negative 155 um, just to darken the, uh, the face up a bit and yellows going to 105. Greens, um, blues, um, magentas, that kind of stuff um, that, can, that you can just leave at default. You don't have to change anything. And you can see that's just kind of darkened the face up a bit. And I'm going to be decreasing the opacity because I just want a very desaturated dull look um, as opposed to a completely black and white picture. And I've set the opacity at 65%. From here what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a rusty kind of texture I've just found on Go um, that I've just found on Google. And I'm just going to resize this, and the purpose of this texture is just to create some um, rough looking skin that's going to give it that zombie effect. And I'm just going to resize it so I can position it well onto the face of the model here. And I've set this on um, overlay, and you can see it's too yellow for the tone of the picture. So what I'm actually going to do is just desaturate this a bit. Um, I'm going to resize it so uh, just to make sure that it fits perfectly onto the face and doesn't look like well it doesn't look like a rusty middle texture and we want this to really blend in so I'm going to set this to around um, 90 or 95 percent opacity. Going to adjustments I'm going to desaturate by using the hue sat uh, slash saturation filter and decreasing it um, the saturation by around negative 70 and clicking OK. And you can see it kind of matches the tone of the overall picture now. And grabbing a 50 pixel soft brush, I'm just erasing all the bits that don't really fit onto the face of the model. And I'm just erasing it so it's only the face and the neck that really gets the rusty middle texture. And I'd like to think that this kind of looks like bullet wounds or scabs or something nasty like that um, and I'm just erasing it so it doesn't stick out of the face really unexpectedly and rubbing it out of the hair and you can see when it finishes it just looks kind of like that and now that you're pretty much done you can see that that's pretty much like half of the effect to create the zombie look and I'm gonna go and get some beautiful blood splatters and pasting it onto my picture, I'm going to resize this and I will be placing this around the mouth area. And you can see that it's kind of not the shape that I want it to be if it was to drip from the mouth. So I'm going to click OK and set this on multiply. And then I'm going to click the little transform button and I'm going to just distort this effect a little bit just so it fits around the mouth area so that it looks like it's dripping from the lips into this beautiful blood waterfall to be a little bit sadistic. Um, and I don't think that's enough, so I'm going to add quite a few blood spatters. I've opened them all up in Photoshop. And the next one that I'm going to use is just kind of like a bloody hand. Don't ask me where I found these. No, I'm kidding. Um, just, just type them in in Google and you'll find them easily enough. And if you just flatten that a little bit um, just to just to make it look like um, this this girl was in a very bloody fight and bit off someone's face um, I'm gonna set this on multiply and and this is just gonna get some different looking blood drips and um, so it doesn't look very very fake or very much like we did this in Photoshop pretty much um, and I'm decreasing the opacity of this one because I think it's a bit overwhelming to around 75% and raising it just a little tiny bit. And um, see that's that's pretty much all the blood spatters um, and I'm just going to adjust the opacity. And the last one I'm going to add is just, oops, I'm just going to add um, 
one of these little sputter ones and um, this one's going onto the mouth as well and really I'm just using quite a few different blood stocks to make sure that I get a very realistic finishing effect and it doesn't look super fake which it actually is because we're working on Photoshop so I'm also getting quite a few different sized drips and colors from these blood stocks and to put the uh, look together I'm gonna make a new layer grab my paintbrush tool and using my color picker and setting this on a multiply I'm gonna pick quite a few different reds and wines and stuff like that and brush this over the teeth and the lips to make sure the blood is everywhere and to make sure that she also looks like she tried to eat a chainsaw for breakfast and lowering opacity to 65% so you can see it looks pretty real now just a few more adjustments to go and from here what you want to do is grab a texture and I've just picked this log texture now don't underestimate it because it actually gives a really really nice um, contrast and some really nice hues and shapes into there that makes it look like a horror movie poster and now I'm making this quite big and placing it over the picture I'm going to be setting this on multiply and you can see it's um, too dark and clouds up the picture so I'm going to reduce opacity to around 80% um, and what I'm also trying to achieve with this texture is make the background quite dark but make the face really stand out and pop and scare you and I'm going to get my eraser and just erase this over the focal and from here you can see that the face is really standing out um, above the wheat fields that you can't really see anymore which is good because the emphasis is on the scary, creepy face that we're going to be making. And now I'm going to get a curves adjustment layer and this can be a really difficult filter to use if you don't have the hang of it, but this can be such a good brightness and contrast tool if you do know how to work this layer. And I'm going to go to around the middle of the curve and you can see my um, input and output values in case you don't really um, know what I'm doing and I'm going to drag this down just a little bit with my input values um, just changing a tiny tiny bit and then I'm going to go up the curve um, to around one third um, down and I'm going to be dragging this up so it makes the image really dark this is going to really give us that depth in our image and give the image um, overall a very scary um, mysterious atmosphere um, and you can see that that's what it looks like after one curves adjustment layer just imagine what we could do with another one so I'm going to decrease the opacity um, to around 80 to 90 percent and I'm going to grab another curves um, adjustment to lighten the image a little bit just the portions that I want a little bit lighter and grabbing my curves layer what I'm going to do is go around halfway again but this time we're going to be dragging it up so that it's brighter and you can see here that instantly the image looks really refreshed and bright but that's not really what we want so I'm going to decrease opacity to around 80% and the opacity really depends on how you want your image to look and because I only want a portion of my image um, light, I'm going to grab a 150 pixel soft brush and start erasing over the um, areas of my image that I don't want quite um, bright and that's just over the face and just over the um, bits that I really want quite dark but I still want those um, um, nice light and dark portions in my image that's really optional, it's really up to you, you could just leave that one if you want Creating a new layer, I'm going to get my paintbrush tool and this is the last bit that we have to do. Make sure your colors are set on black and white. And I'm going to start by brushing um, some white onto the eyes. This is just going to give the eyes a very zombie-like transformation. Um, very much optional and I'm getting a very small, hard, round brush to work with this. And I'm just brushing over the entire eye area, you don't have to be very um, precise with this step, we can clean this up later very easily and I'm just brushing over this until she looks uh, pretty much possessed and then I'm going to zoom out and 
decrease opacity. You don't want like two white uh, funny shapes for eyes. So I'm going to decrease it to around 20 to 25% um, would be my recommended opacity setting for this. And then I'm going to change it to black and make um, the pupils. So I'm just going to dot that a few times before I leave it. And close up looks very strange, but if we just lower opacity a little bit more and zoom out, it looks better. And now I'm just cleaning up with a very, very small brush. And you can see that this is pretty much the whole transformation complete. And if I zoom out, you can see this is the finishing result. Um, what you can also do is apply the image and sharpen it if you want to. But to like the video, um, favorite the video, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please do because I will be making heaps more Photoshop tutorials to come. I'm going to leave it like this. Um, so hopefully you guys found this really, really helpful for creating some scary ass zombies. Remember, but apart from that, I hope you enjoyed another Simply GFX tutorial, and I'll see you next time. Bye!